This is my Lexicon MX200 reverb processor. Let's take a listen. Hi, I'm Jerry Martin, and this video is about reverb. I've divided it up into chapters which you can navigate using the links below, and please let me know in the comments what you think about this, any tips and tricks that you might have, and certainly any questions you have. I've used Hubworks since version 1, and in the early days our computers were limited, so sample sets were somewhat or maybe even completely dry. A hardware reverb unit like this allowed for creating space and perspective in the room while having zero computer overhead. As time progressed, we began to use third-party external software reverb, and for years Hubwork users have been requesting native convolution reverb. This was finally delivered in version 5, and it's incredibly powerful, but somewhat complex. Meanwhile, our computers are much more capable right now, and sample set producers have refined their techniques. Hubwork is capable of fusing together multiple recorded perspective and multi-release samples to create an immersive experience. However, there are still some times that additional reverb may be desirable. For example, if we're running a dry or semi-dry sample set, those of us with multi-channel audio systems that may want to add a surround channel to a stereo single perspective set. And of course, there are advantages in limited RAM situations. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the Hauptwerk mixer, how the audio routing system works, and ultimately go about setting up a multi-perspective virtual acoustic. Modern sample sets are often provided with multiple perspectives being recorded at different points in the space. It's often said that the most important stop in an organ is the acoustic, and certainly if we look at other instruments such as a violin, strings resonate over a soundboard, the quality of which affects the final sound. Similarly, the organ pipes speak into an acoustic, blending together often thousands of points of sound into an immersive experience. Capturing the full spectrum with just two microphones is difficult, especially as the space becomes larger, Think about that experience walking around a large cathedral as the organist plays. Organs can be recorded using a variety of different types of microphones. Cardioid microphones are directional and can be positioned in different configurations. Meanwhile, omnidirectional microphones pick up sound in a 360 degree way. Let's take a listen to some of these perspectives as recorded in a modern sample set. We're going to take a look at Pyotr Grabowski's excellent Święta Lipka sample set. Let's take a quick listen to some of these perspectives as recorded in Pyotr Grabowski's excellent Święta Lipka sample set. So, the overall sound is warm and balanced. Broken into its components, we have a close perspective recorded very close to the instrument. Then we have a front perspective at a short distance from the organ. middle perspective and finally the rear perspective capturing all of that final reflection in the reverb usually recorded with directional microphones pointed away from the organ As we move through those perspectives, did you notice how the sound changed the further we got from the organ? How we lose some of the upper frequencies, it all starts to blend together into a more cohesive sound. Some of the lower frequencies are reinforced as we travel further into the space. 
Okay, let's get to work. By the way, if you're not aware, Hauptwerk has four configuration shortcuts, each representing a completely independent set of settings. So I'm going to launch one of the alternative configurations so that I don't upset my primary configuration. And you can verify this in the About Hauptwerk screen. Let's look at a dry sample set from Piotr Grabowski, the Meltzer Chamber Music Hall. This is a great set with which to practice both your notes and experimenting under the hood with Hauptwerk. We are going to work with two of the large control panels to be accessed from the view menu or other control panel. We need audio, MIDI and performance and audio mixer. I recognize that most users, especially our newcomers, will be using standard stereo, so I'm going to focus on that. However, I do hope that our advanced users may pick up some tips and tricks from this too. So let's look at the easiest way to add reverb quickly to this sample set. Click Mixer Reverb, click Select, under Impulse Response Reverb, pick one of the available options, click OK and OK. And we have reverb. And using the slider on the mixer panel, we can adjust how much we have. So that was the easy option. And now I'm going back in to remove that reverb we applied by selecting none, because we're going deeper. So we need to get a little technical. When I was first learning about all of this, I had never been up close with a mixing desk. And I'm guessing that is true for many of you too. I want to take a few moments to talk briefly about how a physical mixer works and explain some of the terminology that we will see all over Hauptwerk in a moment. Firstly, a mixer takes multiple sound sources and allows us to manipulate them, balance them, and mix them down for final enjoyment, whether that be over speakers, headphones, or recordings. When you first look at a mixer, it can seem overwhelming, but it's laid out in a systematic way that really does make sense. Note that all of the buttons and dials are arranged in vertical columns. This is a channel strip and is the first place that audio hits a mixer. Hauptwerk will refer to this as a primary bus. And in a studio, we would connect an instrument, microphone, or other sound source at the top of the strip. We can adjust the volume, balance, and apply effects down the strip and then send the output of this primary bus or channel strip onwards. Hey, we just covered two terms, primary bus and send. The audio from the channel strip typically moves along to a primary mix bus. These are the final controls on the mixing desk before we enjoy our output. Again, we can balance volume, add effects, and this physical mixing desk has a single stereo primary mix bus which outputs to speakers. To help us route audio through the mixer, we can create groups of buses, and this may help with organization. This is another very important term for Hauptwerk. We have to define bus groups to connect the organ to the mixer. The bus group box that we will look at is essentially Hauptwerk's phone book, or DNS for our younger viewers. Finally, Hauptwerk has eight mixer presets. Each preset is a complete mixer, with all the buses, effects, and routing, so it's like switching out the mixing console just with a click of a button. Let's just walk through how Hauptwerk deals with audio routing. I've got four audio cables here. I'm a visual learner. This may help you too. If I had my studio musicians ready to connect to the physical mixer, I would take one instrument cable per musician and plug these into the mixer. Similarly, we're going to plug ranks of our virtual organ into the Hauptwerk mixer. Out of the box, Hauptwerk comes with default connections that just work for stereo output. But once you learn a little about what's going on, you may start to have ideas of your own. The mixer control panel is divided into two halves. The top half contains some settings that include the wetness slider we saw earlier, and these settings are saved with the loaded sample set. So I can connect one sample set into my configured mixer one way, and load another sample set and plug it in differently, and Hauptwerk will remember. The bottom half contains the settings that affect this installation of Hauptwerk, my audio device, the mixer, and the lookup table, the mixer bus groups. Let's use the trumpet. When I draw a stop and play a note, Hauptwerk first looks at the rank voicing screen to see how I've adjusted the audio of the organ model. 
In the routing screen, we see that each rank has four perspectives, hence the four cables I was showing earlier. This Hauptwerk concept means that you can send four separate copies of the audio, each with their own adjustments downstream into the mixer. Now by default, all four of these are plugged in. And as you can see, they're all given sensible names, Output Perspective 1 through 4. But the volume is only turned up on one of these, so although they're plugged in, they're not making any audio out of the box. Note it's possible on all of these dialogues to make multiple selections. We can click and drag, control click, or on Mac, hit Control A or Command A to select all of the items, and then we can make multiple adjustments simultaneously. Now these drop-down menus are going to populate with names and information from the Mixer Bus Group screen. Remember, this is the phone book. And on the left, we have bus groups, and on the right are the individual primary Mixer buses, or channel strips. Here you can see that Perspective 1 is connected to several of these, whereas the others are just connected to one each. Finally, the mixer. Each entry on the left corresponds to a vertical strip in a real-world mixer. All of those we see right now are master mix buses, the final common pathway, and they're grouped by preset, and each preset has eight individual master mix buses which we can use. Now our mixing desk just had one, and we really just need one for stereo output, and that's already configured and named Stereo Mix 1. Now look at the controls on the right. These are duplicated all the way down, just like the duplicated controls on a real mixer. I can adjust the volume here, the stereo balance, apply an impulse response, connect speakers, and record the audio. If this is the final output, where are the actual channel strips, those primary buses? All the way at the bottom, under Advanced Items. Hautwerk's default routing sends Perspective 1 from the organ into Primary Bus 5, which if we wanted could output subsequently into multiple speakers. I'm looking at you, my multi-channel friends. We have full control, including applying effects here. And then this box shows us where the audio is being sent. And by default, all of the channel strips or primary buses are sending to the stereo mix buses at the top of the screen. Do rewind this, sleep on it, Open the configuration, play around with it yourself, see if you can follow the audio true from beginning to end. And so to our master plan, multi-channel, virtual, acoustic. Knowing that we have four opportunities to intercept the audio from the organ, that represents four individual opportunities to manipulate and apply different impulse responses. Remember Schwiente Lipka, meticulously recorded using four stereo pairs of microphones? Well, let's take our dry sample set with a single sound source and run four cables. Let's keep one of them dry, and that one's already configured, and let's add three different simulated reverb channels. So, we need to set up the mixer first. And for my advanced users, we have confirmation from the developers that reverb applied to primary buses that are not mapped or not in use does not use up CPU cycles. So, this is another way of setting up multiple configurations. And then you can pick on a per organ level which bus you're going to route the audio. This may be a little easier in the current versions of Hauptwerk than using mixer presets, as all of your buses are grouped together here and this is a screenshot of what my current setup looks like. Let's use the first three available and unassigned buses, 9, 10, and 11. Let's give them names. How about close, mid, and rear? Now, they're already connected to the final components of the mixer, so no adjustments needed here. We just need to pick out our impulse responses. With the rear channel selected, let's open the impulse response reverb. And note that for church one, we actually have three options. So for our rear channel, use the rear facing cardioid impulse response. For our mid channel, let's use the omnidirectional for church one. And for close, let's use our ORTF. ORTF implies that we're using directional microphones. That will capture a little bit more of a simulation of that front perspective. Now I have one more adjustment to make here. These profiles by default are configured to allow some of the dry, unprocessed signal through. However, since we are doing that ourselves on a separate mixer bus, I'm going to adjust each of these three to be 100% wet. Now the phone book. Let's click bus groups. And remember, this screen is necessary to populate the menus in the rank routing screen. So remember we were using 9, 10, and 11. Right now, group 9 has nothing in it. So let's connect 9 to 9 
and we'll call it close to make it easy to remember. 10 to 10 and call it mid and 11 to 11 and call it rear. Finally to our organ. Click the rank routing screen. I'm going to select all and I'm going to leave perspective one alone. However, for perspectives two, three, and four, let's connect them to our new mixer bus groups. So perspective two is going to nine close, three, 10 mid, and four is going to 11 rear. So now I have dry, close, mid, and rear perspectives. Okay, let's draw some stops and see what we have. Hmm, it's still dry. Ah, remember I said the volumes on those three perspectives are at zero? That's right, we've got one more place to go. And this is where you're going to fine tune and tweak this virtual acoustic, depending on the organ, the reverbs you've used, your speakers, your headphones, and get this to sound exactly how you want to. So I'm going to leave those stops drawn, and let's go ahead and open up the rank voicing screen. So first off, the blower is a little loud on this organ. I'm going to click on noises. I'm going to leave the adjustment layer at all, and I'm going to drag the master slider. Ah, that's better. Now we're going to make adjustments to all ranks. So click and select all. And now as we open the adjustment dropdown, you will see four perspective mixes, and these are our volume settings for each of the four perspectives. Let's start with perspective one, and I'm going to temporarily turn it off. So let's drag this all the way to zero to get started. And right now, the organ is silent. Let's go to perspective mix four. This is going to be our rear perspective, and let's drag this up initially to 50. So that's our rear perspective. Let's move a little forward in the church. Perspective three was that mid perspective. Let's bring this one up just a little, perhaps to 20. And already here, the reverb is starting to become a little bit more complex. Let's go to perspective two. Again, I'm going to stay rather light on this one, maybe 20. Lots of interest developing in the reverb. And let's go to our close, and this is the dry signal. And again, just a little of this, maybe 30. That brings us back to the front of the church. Reason I have the audio MIDI screen open, you may need to adjust the overall volume down, which can be done either using the trim button or the volume slider. And again, in real time, you can dial the overall reverb of this organ back to zero, and then bring it back up. As you become more comfortable, the voicing screen is going to let you make small adjustments in each perspective to tune the reverb to your taste. And additionally, there are adjustments such that you can dial back brightness or volume in one of the perspectives. And another thing to consider is that an organ voiced for one space may not do very well in a new virtual space. There may be certain resonant frequencies, particularly in the pedal notes, um, and you may need to go in and just dial back several notes just to make that sound better in the virtual acoustic. Something that I've noticed is the effect on tremulance. You can even hear the undulations in the reverb. Another tip, if you are going to apply some reverb to a set that already has some reverb in the voicing screen, on each perspective, there is a release tail truncation adjustment which can be used to dial back the native reverb. Um, so this is a little bit more nuanced and done in real time instead of doing it when loading the sample set, which can be helpful to make some really fine adjustments. So I hope you found this video useful. There's a lot of material here, so do feel free to review this uh, at your leisure. Please let me know what you thought in the comments and feel free to share this amongst your friends. Of course, it is my hope that the next version of Hauptwerk will include a graphical user interface and more usability to the mixer. But for right now, hopefully this will help you get over that initial learning curve to get started. Let's listen to some music.